here with Dr. Richard Besser because we want to know the effects on the body. That's when right. it comes to this. You know, when you're exposed to radiation, it's going to affect your entire body. But there are three parts of the body I want to talk about that are affected, mm -hmm. affected most. The first is your, is your GI tract, your gastrointestinal tract. When you're exposed to radiation, it can cause damage to that tract in the same way that someone going, undergoing cancer therapy will have damage to that. So they'll experience nausea, vomiting, diarrhea. If you have large amounts of, of input of, of radiation, it can destroy the lining, which, which can be fatal. Mm -hmm. The second part I want to talk about is your thyroid gland. That's in your neck. This is your thyroid. It makes a hormone that your body uses to regulate many, many functions. But it does that by using iodine. And one of the things released by reactors is radioactive iodine. It comes into your body and your thyroid gland will concentrate it. And over the long run, that will cause cancer. That's a reason why they give people these iodine tablets. Well, what do they do, actually, these tablets? Well, instead of your body absorbing the radioactive iodine, it will use this instead. And that will protect your thyroid from that from that cancer. Mm -hmm. The third area I want to talk about is your bones, your bone marrow. Inside your bones, that's where your, your body is making all the components of your blood. Your white blood cells would protect against infection. Your platelets would protect against bleeding. With radiation, it can wipe that out and that can cause bleeding and it can cause infection and those things can be fatal. Before we talk about the risk factors that are involved here, but the, the symptoms, are you coughing? What are you exactly doing knowing that you are exposed to this radiation? Well, the earliest signs are those from your gastrointestinal tract. So nausea, vomiting, fever, diarrhea. The unfortunate thing is those can look like a stomach flu. And when you have all these people being evacuated, you can see that and they'll have to sort out the mm -hmm. difference between those two. All right, so let's get to the risk factors right yeah. now. Yeah, you know, it's important to know what puts you at greatest risk. First First is proximity, how close are you to the release of that radiation? The second factor is intensity. How much radiation is released and is there any barrier between you and that radiation? Those barriers, even being indoors, can reduce the risk to you. And then the third is duration, how long are you there? One of the things that was known from Chernobyl mm -hmm. was that the iodine release that people were first exposed to wasn't the big risk factor. That iodine fell on the ground and contaminated grass. Cows ate that grass and it was concentrated in their milk. So over the next months and years, children were drinking contaminated milk and they had massive outbreaks of thyroid cancer. So it was in that manner in which it got into the body, not so much the exposure. That's right. So you'll see the here, the Japanese will say, don't eat food, don't drink things right. that come from that area that's been impacted. If people are concerned, you're going to have suggestions of what they can do? ABCnews.com will be putting out tips on what you can do and I'll be tweeting all day things you can do to make sure you're not, you're not affected should there be a release. All right, Rich, thank you very much.